Hey, good Tuesday morning, everybody. BAM Weather Meteorologist Brett Waltz here, giving you a long-range forecast update, guys. Today's update, we are going to talk about the latest on Tropical Storm, eventually Hurricane, potentially Major Hurricane Aaron. Over the next 7 to 10 days, a cold front that will arrive right around the same time as Aaron's arrival. And then we'll talk about how the pattern will then evolve after that as we head into the end of August and into the start of September. You know, I think that in general, it's been a, a warmer the normal summer for much of the country, humid as well. I think that we've got more of that, but we could be getting into a little bit more of a pattern that can feature some dryness across parts of the United States. So we'll talk about that as well to close out the summer months. And so taking a look here, here's a look at the multi-model ensemble for Aaron uh, over the past four or five runs or so. And what I want to highlight, what I want to note, this is a mix of the EPS, the GEFS, the UK Met, and the Canadian. And so four different ensembles models here of probably hundreds of different members uh, that we're looking at and averaging out. Notice over the past couple of runs the westward tick. This is something we need to keep a very, very close eye on because the longer that it takes for Aaron to curve northward, the more likely that it will get close to the United States. Still well out to sea at this time, but I do still think we need to be keeping an eye on it for the eastern coast. If you take a look here, again, here's the mean right now, the mean forecast. You can see the different ensembles. The American data is in green, Canadian data is in pink, uh, European data is in red. They're all still out to sea. But there are still a couple of members in here that try to get close to the southeast United States coast. So I still think that this region needs to be aware, needs to be watching the forecast. Favorite idea is still east out to sea, but the tendency all year long has been for this Bermuda high to trend stronger with time, which would push this system further west. And again, that's already been the trend. We also have a cold front coming down from the north into the east, which theoretically could also shove this high further to the west. And so we need to be keeping an eye on this forecast. As things stand right now, bottom line is most likely track is off of the east coast, but we still at the very least need to be monitoring this system on the eastern seaboard over the next week or so before it starts to curve northward in the Atlantic Ocean. There will also be implications from this system in terms of the cold front. We talked about that yesterday, how it's likely going to help amplify a cold front as we work into the middle to the latter part of the week two time frame. We're, we're seeing that here in the week two forecast. We go from a much warmer than normal pattern the next seven days. We do have a little bit of a cold front in the short term to the north across the upper and midwest, or at least give some relief from those very mild overnight lows, but then the much above normal temperatures come right back as we work into the weekend and into early next week. And with that, we'll continue to see moisture in, again, a lot of the areas that have continued to see above normal rains, Minnesota, northern Iowa, Wisconsin, maybe parts of northern Illinois, while rainfall totals for the Ohio Valley and the southern and western plains are messier in nature. As we build in that cold front, a couple of things are going to happen. Number one, core of the warmth will shift back to the west. Start of the period will be warmer in the eastern part of the country. With time, that will fade and the warmth will shift more so towards the western part of the country. Towards the very end of week two, but probably more so into week three, we will need to watch for this warmth to start to bleed back a little bit further to the east. With the tropical system and likely major Hurricane Aaron working northward in the Atlantic here, guys, what will ultimately end up happening is that will tend to pull moisture away from the eastern part of the United States. Now, the EPS, we'll talk more about this here in a moment, it's trying to bring widespread moisture here across the southeastern part of the country and into the Ohio Valley. In my experience, that is not normally how these evolve, so leaning more so towards the drier solution for the Ohio Valley, it's slightly drier than normal, wetter than normal across the north central United States. Here's again a more zoomed in look, a higher resolution look at the next seven days in terms of rainfall. You can certainly see where once again the main corridor of rains will be the next seven days. Here's a look at those differences early to midweek two in terms of precipitation. You can see the heavier moisture further to the east associated with Aaron. Again, traditionally immediately west of where the tropical moisture goes, it's drier, which is the opposite of what the EPS has. It's trying to put in an upper level low. The GEFS is quite a bit drier. 
tries to bring in some moisture on the East Coast from the front. I think that's plausible, but I like this idea more. It makes more sense with how tropical systems typically evolve, which will favor continued activity across the Northern Ag Belt, a little bit drier in the Eastern and the Southeastern Ag Belt regions. In terms of how this pattern then evolves into the week three timeframe, we will continue to need to watch for additional tropical threats. We don't have anything specific on the horizon right now, but it's that time of the year. Tropical forcing for the time being is in a somewhat favorable state, and so I do think that that is a continued risk late August into early September, but no specifics at this time. And so taking a step back, looking at global pattern drivers, our global winds are weak again, lower than normal, La Nina-like, that will be a big factor in the pattern ahead. And if we look at what that typically leads to into September, once again, it tends to favor a warmer than normal pattern across the southern and the eastern tiers of the United States. That would mean more heat potential, more warm low potential, continuing to deal with risks that we've had throughout much of the summer with maybe cooler risks further to the north. In terms of precipitation, the yellows and the greens here are above normal moisture. Look at where it is, just where it's been, it seems like, for the last several weeks across the upper Midwest. But it does favor drier risk across the Mid-Atlantic into the Ohio Valley and across parts of the Western Plains. Taking a look at our tropical forcing, I will say a lot of variability here in what our tropical forcing is doing. The CFS here, I think, has the best idea of moving upward motion and thunderstorm activity into the maritime continent. GEFS is more into the Western Pacific, the EPS stays in the Indian Ocean. I think somewhere in between is the most realistic idea. What does that mean? Well, look at MJO phase four and five with our weaker global winds into September. Look at the warmth. You can see that there. You can see phase five overall favors the warmer, the normal pattern as well. And in terms of precipitation, we tend to see some moisture in parts of the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes. And then phase five especially is a drier phase as a whole. Both are drier in the southeastern part of the country. So unless we get tropical activity, that's probably an area that will average out drier in this time frame. To add on to that here, we look at our North Pacific pattern. Once again, it favors the warmer than normal idea. And you can see that here both at the end of August and into the start of September. So we've got multiple different pattern drivers favoring continued hotter than normal threats late August and into September returning following our moderation. And I think that you can see that here from the EPS Weekly. You can see with time, watch what happens, watch as the ridge of high pressure starts to come back a little bit further to the east. Look at the oranges and the yellows. I think this is a reasonable progression. Warmth probably starts out in the western and central US in this week's three and four time frame, bleeds back east with time. And that's ultimately what we went with here. Here's a look at how we average out weeks three and four, again, probably starting in the central to western US, shifting to the east with time, and I think overall favoring an above normal temperature pattern. Could there be much above normal temperatures at times? I, I do think that that is possible due to some variability with our top analogs and threats in the western Pacific not going much above normal, but if we were to expand the much above normal temperatures, it would likely be in this region in here and perhaps pumping this warmth up a little bit more. So something to keep in mind there. In terms of precipitation, at the end of the day, a lot will have to do with variability from tropical cyclones. There's no way to know where or if tropical cyclones will hit the US at this distance in the week's three and four timeframe. So we just have to go with our top overall signals, global winds, tropical forcing, tends to favor below normal precipitation, western plains, and down across the southern tier of the U.S. into parts of the Ohio Valley with continued moisture in the upper Midwest. One last thing before we go, guys. This is fun if you're looking ahead towards winter. We have our preliminary December forecast that we wanted to share with you all today. It's, you know, a little less than four months away at this point. So our initial stab here at the December outlook, I will say with a cool Enzo state, there tends to be volatility. Not looking at a strong La Nina, but either a cool Enzo state or a weak La Nina favored as we head into this winter. Taking a look at a bunch of different pattern drivers tends to favor some cooler air to the north and warmer air to the south into the southeast. I would imagine this would favor a good bit of variability, certainly an active storm track through here. And I do think that I see some, some similarities to last year. I think there will be a tendency for this 
colder air in the north central part of the country and towards the Hudson Bay with fluctuations of the warmth coming north and then some cooler air coming south at times. I think that it can be somewhat volatile heading into the start of this upcoming winter. We take a look here at the upper level pattern. There's not a lot of blocking. Actually, there's no blocking in the North Atlantic at all. And I agree with that, which means that this Southeast Ridge is going to flex at times. You're not going to get sustained cold outbreaks with this type of a look. Because of the North Pacific, you can get cold shots, but it's not going to be extended based off of the current setup as we head into December. So that's where we're at right now. Again, just kind of a first fun look at the month of December. Would certainly think that this could favor an active snow track across parts of the Midwest and the Upper Midwest, which we'll get more into with our webinar on August 27th. Thanks guys for watching today. Uh, chat with you soon.